Welcome everyone to Learning with Rev. In this video, we are going to be learning uh, some shortcuts you can use with TensorFlow to point at a specific GPU to use your CPU and how to limit memory on your GPU. So, I've got a new device set up here today, my new desktop, and uh, today we are going to be using an iPy notebook inside of Visual Studio Code. This code, except for the very top here, is the same as our previous tutorials. We've loaded the MNIST dataset. We built a basic convolutional model with two convolutional and two, two pooling layers, and then uh, ten, uh, a dense layer with 10 nodes on it. And then we compile and fit our model. Down here, I have displayed NVIDIA SMI, uh, which is a command that just tells you information about your GPU. In this case, I have a 2060, it kind of got cut off here. We got 12 gigs of RAM, and then these are the things that are using VRAM right now or using the GPU. Thing we're looking at here is this number right here. We're using about 2.4 gigs of RAM currently. And at the top of our iPy notebook, uh, we are going to be using this OS environment, CUDA device order, PCI bus, and then set CUDA device visible device to zero. So this points TensorFlow at the first GPU uh, that it picks up. In this case, it's our only GPU. Um, we are going to be ignoring this limit memory for now. So this will just take a minute. Should be a little quicker than this, but it might take a second to kick off. See, it's taking longer than it should, so we'll restart that, clear our outputs, and try again. Done, perfect. Now we can load our data set in, we can build our model, and we can start training with model.fit. And that is kicking off right now. Right now it's loading all the CUDA environmental variables. And then once we start seeing it train, we will check NVIDIA SMI once again, just so we can see what's going on. As I mentioned right before we started running these Python files, we we're at 2.375, and now we're at 11. Why are we using all of our memory? Well, by default, TensorFlow uses all the memory available on the GPU. It's good for some things. It allows it to deal with different sized networks and everything. It makes sure nothing else interrupts it. However, it doesn't let you train multiple networks on the same GPU at the same time. So what I'm going to show you here is how to do that. So we're going to stop and reset our environment. You can see right here it's restarting our Jupyter kernel. We're going to do the same thing, only we are going to use this tf.config experimental set memory growth of our GPU, which is in the list of physical devices, to true. So if I run NVIDIA SMI right now, we are at 2.468. We're going to limit memory growth, data, model fit and we're at 3.977 so from about 2.5 to 3.9 it's about one and a half gigabytes which is expected for a small network like this another thing we should note is our time per step three milliseconds per step which is expected also uh, it was the same previously you can scroll back and see that but now I'm going to stop this and we are going to force this to use the CPU. Once again, we're going to check NVIDIA SMI. We're about two and a half gigs. We're going to set our device to negative one, which points it at the CPU. Since we're not using the GPU, we don't need to run this anymore. Data, network, train. So it's training. As you can see, it's running about half as fast. NVIDIA SMI is still at 2.5. This proves to us that the GPU is not currently being used. And we'll see in a second that our average is now six milliseconds per step. So this is a very small network here with only two convolutional layers. Uh, and in larger networks, especially with larger images, CUDA parallelization will be taken into account much more. So it will be more important to use your GPU. If you are using small numerical data, let's say three, four, five, maybe 10 inputs with just some dense layers, maybe an autoencoder, uh, it may actually be slower on your GPU because of the IO of the GPU. The CPU has to write uh, to the GPU, the GPU has to run that to the memory, and then it runs the network. 
So uh, there are many cases, especially with images, where it will be quicker to use the GPU, but there are times when the CPU may be advantageous. So I hope you all learned something today. In review, we reviewed how to set your CPU or GPU and how to limit your memory on your GPU. If you like this video or if you learned something, please give it a like and share it. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section below. Thank you for all for watching and I'll see you next time.